Hello, this video is going to show how we can perform unit testing with LDRA unit. Now what I've done is I've used Texas Instruments Code Composer Studio and I've created a simple project here and I'm able to, to run this on this TMS 570 launchpad. And this is the code here that I want to be able to test. Now this is the LDRA launcher and I've configured LDRA unit <coughs> so it knows how to compile using Texas Instruments Code Composer Studio for ARM, and I'm now going to run what we call the build import. Inside the build import, I'm going to invoke Code Composer Studio. And by doing this, what's going to happen is LDRA is going to be able to listen to everything that Code Composer Studio does. So first of all, here we have Code Composer Studio. Here we have the code that was generated by Halcogen, and we can see here all the code for managing basically the peripherals. I've generated that into a library, and then I've linked that library into my main project here. And this is the code that I've written, and in particular, this function is the one that I want to test, this function integer to ASCII. So first of all, I need to go and perform a build. So I'm going to rebuild the Halcogen library. There we can see it's built it. And now I'm going to rebuild the project that I want to test. Okay, so there we can see that's built. And now I'm going to close down Code Composer Studio and the build import has listened to what happened and it can see we've got two executables or two targets. I've got my output here. This is the one I want to test and we can see the two source files. I've also got include paths and also so preprocessor symbols. For the Halcogen library, we can see we have a lot more source files here. What I can also do is I can run the compiler preprocessor. And this is now going to effectively find out are there any defines that are known internally by the compiler. And as we can see, there are several defines here. Right, so I'm now ready to start testing. So this is the file I want to test. So I'm simply going to right click and open this with LDRA unit. So first of all, it needs to analyze the source code so it can understand what functions are inside the code. So we just need to wait for it to finish running the analysis and then we can start doing some testing. Right, so there we can see we have the various functions. So first of all, I'm going to create a sequence. Let's create a, a new sequence here and let's call it unit test uh, integer to ASCII. I want to measure the code coverage. Uh, I want to create stubs, so if any, any functions are missing, I want you to automatically stub them. Uh, similarly, any variables are missing, and let's do a test build. And then what I want to be able to do is I want to test just that single function. So I'm going to go into here, and I'm going to say, I just want to include this function. All the others, I want them to be excluded, and if need be, I can then stub them. So let's go and click continue on here. Right, that's doing a little bit more analysis. It's now performing a test build, and as we can see, that successfully built. So now I should be able to try doing some testing. So let's take this integer to ASCII function here. And I can expand it. I can see it takes three inputs. It returns a value, and it also calls memcopy, and it probably uses some global variables as input and output. So I want to go and create a test case. All right, I'm just going to create a single test case. And let's go and look at the inputs and outputs. So let's give it a value of uh, 999. <clears throat> and digits will have three digits. Blanks will go for zero. And then all these, I don't really care about these. These are all input globals. They're all going to get initialized. So I'm simply going to set those as value retain. Now, what about the outputs? Well, I would expect to get character nine. I then expect to get another character 9, and then another character 9, and really I should put in the rest of the values I'm expecting, but um, just to save time, I'm now going to go and execute this. So this is now generating a, a test harness. It's built it using the, the TI compiler. It's now downloading it to my target. It's running on the target. I'm getting the information back, and we should be able to find that the test has passed. So here we can see these are the values I entered, and as we can see, they're the same as the actual ones. Well, I also should have put in these values here, but I'm just going to accept the actual values. So let's go and save this. 
And now we should find that we have a test that's run and we have some coverage. So we take a look at our integer to ASCII function, we can see we've got 60% statement coverage. If we want, we can actually take a closer look at this. Maybe we can look at a flow diagram. So here we're looking at a flow diagram and we can see very clearly the path we've taken. So here in green are the paths we've taken. In yellow, it's a block we've, we've executed, but we haven't ex exited from both outputs here. So that's why that's yellow. Here, we haven't executed this block at all. So it looks like we've never had a value less than 180. So let's create a second test case with a value less than 180. We should be able to increase the coverage. So let's go back into here and let's create a, another test case. So once again, I'm going to create a test case. Let's go and continue. And this time I'm going to specify an input of, let's go to one, two, three. And again, we'll go to three digits, zero blanks. And once again, I'm going to select all these and I'm going to set those once again to value retained. And the output, I'd expect to get one, two, three, and then probably zeros again. And once again, I'm just going to go and run this. So once again, that's generated the harness. Again, it's built it using the TI compiler. It's now downloading it to the target. It's going to execute on the target. It's going to regress the first test case that we did. And it's then going to execute the second test case. And once again, we can see that it's passed. So again, I'm going to save this. And we can see the first test is now shown as passing. And the sec second test case has been simply saved. What about our coverage? Well, we should have increased that. So we're now up to 76%. And if I go back into my flow diagram, I can now go to my options and I can refresh the results and we can now see, yes, we have executed this bit of code here. So a final test case I want to do is I want to basically execute this block of code. And in order to do that, I'm going to need two digits. So let's go and create a third test case here. So once again, I'm going to go back into Eldra unit and this time I'm going to go and simply copy this test case. So let's go and create as a new test case. And this time I'm going to specify a value here of, uh, let's go for 99. So this time I'm going to go for two digits and the output here, of course, should be nine and then nine. And then that would probably be zero. And I think this is probably two at the end. So, okay, let's go and execute this. So once again, it's going to generate the harness, it's built it, and it's downloading it to the target, it's going to regress the first two test cases, and then it'll execute the third one. So again, we can see the results coming back, as well as the execution history, and once again, the test has passed. And now hopefully, when we go to our flow graph, we're going to find we have increased coverage, and indeed, we now have 81% coverage, and once again, I can go back to here and refresh the results and there we can see we've increased the coverage. Well, in a similar way I could go and get 100% statement coverage, 100% branch decision coverage and also 100% MCDC. Okay so hopefully that's given you a, an introduction to LDRA unit and if you'd like more information then please don't hesitate to contact us at LDRA. Thank you.